this is Vicki Gervicus at the Greater Gainesville Chamber, and I'm delighted to welcome Brandon Peters today. He is one of our candidates for state representative in District 20. Let me just double check, District 22. So um, we are happy to be able to talk to him today and get to know him a little bit better as he uh, continues on the road to November 8th. Brandon, welcome. Thank you so much, Vicki. It's great to be here with you all today. And it's uh, very nice of the Greater Gainesville Chamber of Commerce to give me the opportunity to address its membership. I wanna first introduce myself. Uh, as Vicki said, my name is Brandon Peters. I am a candidate for the Florida Legislature in House District uh, 22. Uh, and I'm running uh, as a citizen of Levy County. Uh, District 22 includes Levy, Gilchrist and a western portion of Alachua County, uh, including part of Gainesville and most of the main campus of the University of Florida, uh, which is an engine for prosperity within this district, along with some of our fine private enterprises. Uh, I'm here as a member of the Williston Chamber of Commerce. Uh, I'm a lawyer. I've practiced law for 30 years in the federal and state courts of the state of Florida and elsewhere. Uh, my wife and I live on the edge of Gothi State Forest in beautiful Levy County, uh, and we love District 22. We've always been in District 22, but because of the new maps after the census, uh, District 22 now includes a portion of uh, Alachua County, and as I said, a portion of Gainesville. So I guess that brings us here today. Uh, <laughs> what can you expect from me uh, in, in Tallahassee if I'm fortunate enough to be your representative? Um, first of all, I've always believed uh, that the best government uh, is the government closest to the people. Uh, I trust our uh, local officials here in Levy County and in Alachua County uh, to make the best decisions about the neighborhoods they live in. There's really no reason that I can think of uh, for some senator uh, from Miami-Dade County or some representative from uh, Escambia County to be sounding off on what the needs are of our unique communities and telling us uh, how to trim our trees uh, what drinking straws we can and can't use, what suntan lotions uh, they think are the best ones for us to use, and how to regulate our food trucks. And these are all uh, ways that Tallahassee has imposed its one-size-fits-all uh, approach to state government on our communities. And you can count on me to be a strong voice against that type of preemption. I'm a big proponent of home rule, and I will defend uh, the cities, counties, and school boards against unfunded mandates. You know, a lot of people, including my opponent, uh, have uh, gone out of their way to talk about uh, they've done this or that without telling you uh, that they've not given any money to do this or that, which is a disguised way of forcing us and our businesses and our families uh, to have to pay taxes. Because when the state government tells the local government they have to do something and it doesn't come with money, uh, that costs the local taxpayers. And so we need to fight against disguised local taxes. Uh, and I can give you a perfect example. You know, when, when uh, the legislature told our supervisors of elections uh, that they have to uh, sign people up for vote by mail twice as often, well, that comes with an administrative expense. That comes with uh, huge overhead costs, including uh, the staff, you have to train and equip to process the vote by mail request forms, update each voter registration file. Uh, it comes with uh, a price for postage and envelopes and stamps. So these are the types of unfunded mandates that hurt our communities. And yet we have politicians with political agendas bragging as if they've done something great for us by fill in the blank. Uh, I won't be that kind of, uh, I won't be that kind of a leader in Tallahassee. Um, pretend leaders uh, take credit, real leaders uh, take action, and I'll be the kind of person that takes actions to defend our communities uh, against the incursions of the state capitol. Okay, very good. All right, well, let's jump in and uh, dive down a little bit on, on some of those issues, and I think you'll find uh, 
the questions uh, dovetail nicely with your opening statement. And I will say nobody got the questions ahead of time. So, <laughs> all right. So uh, you touched on this, but here's a, the first question's a little opportunity for you to um, uh, speak a little more on anything uh, uh, particular. And that would be, what would be your top priorities and projects if you are elected? You know, I, I think that um, top of mind uh, differs depending upon the community uh, that you're that you're looking at. I can tell you uh, that for my home community, um, we need rural health care. We don't even have an emergency room. Somebody gets injured in a peanut field uh, picking uh, uh, peanuts, and uh, they'll bleed out before they make it to UF Shands, assuming they even survive till the ambulance gets there. So. A pregnant mother uh, goes into a uh, critical fetal distress uh, by the time she gets to an obstetrical facility uh, in Gainesville, uh, there may be a fatality. And uh, unfortunately, that just doesn't, it doesn't work. Um, so so for, the, for the rural communities, uh, I believe it's very important uh, that we expand Medicaid um, and, and the money is there for us to be able to, to sustain a medical campus in a county such as mine, uh, but it doesn't happen unless we expand Medicaid and enter into partnerships uh, with great institutions like the University of Florida, U.S. Shands Healthcare, uh, and HCA, uh, and, and all of the various providers that uh, dovetail within that system. Um, we need to work with our local stakeholders to make sure uh, that we that we have adequate medical access for our residents in, in Levy County. But in, in Gainesville, you know, it's, it's different. Um, it's hard for the business community to attract workers uh, when, when the workers don't have homes that they can afford to live in. And so I think we need to work together uh, with local government, uh, with the state and federal government, uh, and our business partners to make sure uh, that people do have access to affordable housing uh, within within the city of Gainesville and, and within uh, Alachua County, that's that's critical. Uh, if people can't afford to live there, then they certainly can't afford to work there. And so, I believe that's you know very very important for for Alachua County. Okay, very good. Um, this question uh, uh, pertains a little bit to uh, recent events. Uh, earlier this year, we saw a special legislative session that was devoted to the insurance crisis in Florida. Given Hurricane Ian's uh, devastating impact around the state last week, and that will linger on, uh, what measures do you think the legislature uh, should undertake? What would you like to see in the next session? Well, let, let's, let's be clear, um, and, and it's a great question, and it's a very timely question. Um, there's virtually no one living in District 22 uh, who owns a home or a business that has not been affected by the property insurance crisis. Um, and, and for years, we're talking decades, uh, this has been a, a building problem and politicians have chosen instead to uh, have uh, debates over which books our children can read, what kinds of conversations they can have with their school teachers uh, and who ought to control the curricula of our great colleges and universities. Uh, they, they, they ignored this problem uh, and, and created a crisis. My insurance rates doubled this year. Probably a lot of people listening to this had their insurance company go bankrupt or tell them they were being dropped from the policy. Um, here's the real truth of the matter. Giving away $2 billion to a failing insurance industry was a bad idea. And it's an, an idea uh, that my opponent championed, and as the House Majority Whip pushed others to support and get behind, I never ever would have voted uh, for the bill to dole out uh, $2 billion of taxpayer money to the failing insurance industry. Um, that, that kind of bailout is uh, completely inimical to uh, my principles about a free market economy. Uh, if, it, if, it, if it can't sustain uh, then it needs to go the way of the dinosaurs. The truth about the property insurance crisis in Florida is that for decades, and this is not a Democratic problem or a Republican problem, it is a uniquely Florida problem. 
for decades, uh, political figures in Tallahassee have approved insurance uh, rate structures that penalize people who don't live in coastal communities. Uh, has forced inland residents to pay a subsidy in the form of a higher premium so that folks who live on the uh, Gulf of Mexico and the Atlantic Ocean and the Keys uh, can pay lower premiums, which encourages development, which encourages construction, which encourages people to build every square inch of the state of Florida right up to the shoreline. And the predictable happens. We have a hurricane Ian. We've known this was coming for years. We need to have a responsible legislature that approves a rate structure where everybody pays at a premium that reflects the true risk that they bear. And if they want to build a $25 million uh, mansion right on Palm Beach, then they ought to pay an insurance rate that reflects the risk that they're exposing their insurance company to. It's not fair to have middle-class families in Orlando and Tampa and Gainesville and elsewhere uh, pay more than they ought to for their risks, just so some person in Palm Beach County can get lower insurance and the developers are happy. Okay, very good. Um, on, on the topic of uh, people and our uh, population in the state, uh, Florida's population is expected to expand by 32% by 2040. Um, the numbers you hear banded around a lot are a thousand new people moving in every day. Um, this is, has profound impacts on our state. What do you think the legislature should be doing to uh, address this? You know, uh, because of the uh, uniquely free, constitutionally based society we live in, uh, you can't put up a, a, a border fence. Uh, you can't uh, hang out a uh, not welcome sign. If people want to relocate here, uh, they're perfectly entitled to under our constitutional democracy. Uh, however, uh, the state of Florida is a sandbar. It is a sandbar that sticks out into the middle of the Caribbean and the Gulf of Mexico, uh, where we have some of the vi most violent uh, tropical storms on Earth. And it shouldn't surprise anybody that we've had a Hurricane Ian uh, or the, the storms in the past, like Hurricane Andrew and Charlie. Um, th these are predictable. Uh, it's also predictable that because of our finite water resources and competition between developers and agriculture and the residents who just want to bathe and have a cool drink of water, uh, that we were going to eventually uh, stress our water resources to the point where uh, basically living here in Florida uh, comes with no guarantee that you'll have enough water next year to fill your swimming pool, water your lawn, uh, uh, take an aspirin. Um, and so I think that the state needs to be more responsible in the management of our uh, water resources. Uh, we need to look at permitting any type of well uh, that a person uh, drills, however big or small, uh, so that uh, water can't just be extracted from the aquifer uh, with no limitations uh, by, by anybody, uh, be it uh, folks in agriculture, or some guy that likes to water his lawn every day. Um, this, this, this is unsustainable with 23 million people right now and an extra 32% on top of that. And so I think regulating our water resources is important. And it bothers me that uh, with my opponent in office, we have a system in place that he's never tried to fix. that allows a company like Nestle for the price of a $100 permit to extract 1 million gallons a day, up to 1 million gallons a day from the Santa Fe River uh, and, and sell it back to us in plastic bottles. Uh, that bothers me. It's a system uh, who, who, which, which ought to be dismantled uh, and replaced by one where water usage uh, reflects the actual usage uh, of, of the water for the purposes it's, it's being uh, put to. And uh, so, um, I think I think that's that's job one. Get on top of the water situation. Um, you know, my opponent supported a bill that would have given the last bucket of water to Big Sugar in the middle of a drought. It's Senate Bill 2508 uh, during the 2022 session. 
And um, I objected to that. And fortunately, so did Governor DeSantis. He vetoed it. It was a bad idea, a bad bill, and I never would have gotten behind that. Okay, very good. Um, next, we're going to shift to um, to elections and voting. Uh, a dramatic shift in voter registrations is taking place where the number of NPAs, no party affiliation, has almost doubled to 27% of the total number of voters. What impacts do you think that shift is going to have on our elections and our legislature? You know, it's interesting. Um, I, I think as long as we have closed primaries, the impact will be uh, minimal. Uh, but, but, but if we were to open up the primaries, which I'm not unalterably opposed to, by the way, um, if we were to allow uh, people to vote in one primary, pick your favorite primary, mm -hmm. sure, some people will engage in strategic voting. Uh, but, I, but I believe that, uh, you know, we need to give the parties uh, their, their, their primaries uh, on the same day, and we need to consider seriously, and I know the parties object to this, but I don't, uh, allowing the uh, no party affiliates and minor party uh, voters to participate. Uh, because ultimately it comes down to, in most races, a Republican against a Democrat, including in, in my race, and people ought to have a voice in who the nominee uh, is. So, so I think that's an issue we need to tackle. But until we do, um, I believe the battle for the heart and soul of the fo folks who aren't Republicans or Democrats uh, will be limited to the uh, period of time we call the general election, this 11 week period after the primary is over leading up to uh, the general election in November. Um, I think it will moderate people's voices. I don't think you'll see the type of extremism in primaries if we had open primaries uh, that generates some very bizarre candidates. We see this uh, not only in Florida, but in other states at all levels of government, local, state and federal, just some very, uh, odd people get nominated with, mm. with uh, closed primary systems. So people will need to moderate their tones of voice, their policy stances, uh, and opening up the primaries might diminish the, uh, uh, the power of the political parties, uh, but I'm not a cheerleader for a political party. I'm, I'm a cheerleader for the citizens uh, of the state of Florida in District 22. And that includes uh, the very, very large number of people who choose not to be a member of either major political party for their own reasons. Okay, very good. Um, and now we get that closing, you know, general question. Uh, why should our local business community support you? Well, I am a small business owner. It's a great question. Uh, I, have, I have been a lawyer practicing in this state for three decades. Uh, I represent business owners, businesses of all different sizes. I've represented uh, publicly traded companies that uh, sell their stocks on the New York Stock Exchange. And I've represented uh, mom and pop outfits uh, that, uh, you know, uh, probably some names you would know. Um, but but uh, the, the, the point is, if you understand how business works, if you understand uh, the needs of the commercial community, um, you, you understand that they're that they're the needs of the people that live in that community. Because without good jobs, uh, without uh, a tax base to sustain uh, public transportation like RTS, to come up with money to repave roads that are full of potholes and have degraded shoulders, unless we have a strong tax base and employment opportunities and uh, a government that encourages entrepreneurship and commercial enterprise, um, then, then everybody suffers. And, and I recognize that, not just as a, a business, as a business owner, uh, but as a guy who, on behalf of his clients for the past 30 years, has, has had to read a lot of balance sheets who, who understand what it is uh, in an economy like this one to try and capitalize a, a business with interest rates skyrocketing, uh, how small businesses need to conserve cash in times like this. Uh, th these, are, these are tough times, but you want somebody who who is actually not on the public dole, completely uh, dependent on a, uh, a public uh, uh, salary. Uh, you want somebody who's actually in the trenches every single day. Uh, and I submit to you that my opponent and I uh, are very different in that regard. He talks a good game with the support of small business. 
uh, being one of his uh, key phrases, but uh, look at a guy who's actually a small businessman uh, who represents small businesses and you'll find what you're looking for. Very good. Okay, well, those are the questions I had for you. Now, so, now the floor goes back to you. Anything uh, that you didn't get a chance to say, anything I didn't ask you about that you wanted to touch on, uh, your time. Well, thank you very much. You know, uh, for Florida uh, to attract uh, workers from other states, uh, Florida needs to be a uh, welcoming, uh, family-friendly environment. And there's a lot of social and cultural legislation uh, that Florida has wasted its time pursuing in our state capital in the last two years uh, that make Florida anything but a welcoming and family-friendly state. Um, we don't need to be picking on children who are different. Uh, we don't need to be censoring classroom discussions. Uh, we don't need to be uh, banning certain versions of history that aren't even being taught in our public school places or censoring books. Uh, this is the type of silliness uh, that makes people look at Florida and think, please don't relocate my company there because I'm not moving when, with my family and with my kids. And so, um, you know, uh, not the least of these uh, issues is the uh, concern uh, that a lot of women have uh, in, in, in uh, looking at the legislature we have, at my opponent and the way he's voted. Um, we shouldn't be talking about complete bans on women's reproductive freedom. Uh, we shouldn't be uh, talking about 15 week bans with no exception for uh, rape, incest, or uh, human trafficking victims. Um, and yet those are exactly the types of measures that my opponent has supported. And there are many uh, young girls, uh, their mothers and their grandmothers, uh, even their great grandmothers that are very concerned for their future. Uh, and the truth is, my wife is 51 years old, and she feels less free today than when she uh, was, was uh, a young girl growing up in Miami-Dade County, because uh, reproductive freedoms have been stolen from her uh, by people like my opponent. So if we're going to truly make Florida uh, the beacon of hope uh, that it can be, the engine of prosperity that it can be, a hub for commerce throughout Latin America and the world, in a global economy, uh, we need to make sure that people know the truth uh, about the abortion votes that my opponent has taken and the fact that I won't let us go backwards. Uh, I will make sure uh, that women uh, never ever again lose ground. It was only 100 years ago that women first got the right to vote. 50 years ago, women couldn't have a credit card. Uh, my opponent, I don't know what his vision is for women in the future, but my, my vision is Government needs to stay out of their lives and let them do what's best for their family, including decide when to start a family and with whom. Thank you very much. It's been an honor to be here with you today. Thank you so much, Brandon. It has been great to get to know you a little bit better. And I do want to uh, remind everybody that at the Greater Gainesville Chamber, we want you to get out, make your voice heard, get to know our great candidates uh, that are running uh, in no for the November 8th election. We will have all of our interviews on our website, uh, greatergainesvillechamber.com, and we'll have the dates and the information you need to know to be an informed voter. Thank you again, Brandon. Good luck on the trail. See you Thank in November. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Bye yes, now. Bye-bye.